our other joint winner is run ahead execution an alternative to very um, large instruction windows for out of order processes authored by onur mutlu jared stark chris wilkerson and yel pat this paper appeared in hpca 2003 and citation goes like this run ahead execution is a pioneering paper that opened up new avenues in dynamic prefetching the basic idea of run ahead execution effectively increases the instruction window very significantly without having to increase physical resource size example the issue queue this seminal paper spawned off a new area of ilp enhancing microarchitecture research this work has had strong industry impact as evidenced by IBM's Power 6 load look ahead Nvidia Denver and Sun's Rock hardware scouting um both of my very favorite papers i'm so excited um to announce this and now to uh, we would hear a a short retrospective presentation from the authors okay first of all uh, we're very much honored and humbled to receive this award uh, i'm particularly excited because this was the first paper that i've ever written in my life I should say I'll give you a short retrospective. I have a lot of slides so don't be stuck on the slides. I think you can just follow me. Uh I'll talk about runhead execution. Uh, basically we were at the time working on uh essentially building a better out of order machine and we found out as many others did was if you have a small window you get full window stalls. Even though many of the instructions in the window are independent of what's stalling you and as a result you cannot retire them because of precise exceptions. and more importantly you cannot bring a new instruction to the machine that would later stall you like this load over here and uh, we did a lot of experiments together with the folks uh, at intel uh, on the workloads that they used to design their processors with and we found out uh, that more than 50% of this time is spent on cache misses others have also shown this before in fact uh, the best paper award winning paper at this hpca showed a similar result uh in the previous session and one way to actually get rid of that impact is building a much larger window that uh, reduces your reduces your execution time uh, and clearly reduces the stall time as well the problem is uh, as main memory latency increases this instruction window size should also increase to fully tolerate the latency and building a large instruction window to begin with is a challenging task if you would like to achieve at the same time low power and energy consumption short cycle time and low design and verification complexity which all of us want to achieve all of those right execution is a very simple idea it's a technique to obtain the memory level parallelism benefits of a large instruction window and when the oldest instruction the long latency cache miss we checkpoint the architectural state and enter a special speculative execution mode called run ahead mode in this mode we speculatively pre-execute instructions and the purpose is only to generate prefetches l2 miss dependent instructions or long latency miss dependent instructions are marked invalid and dropped and when the original miss returns you restore the checkpoint flush the pipeline and resume normal execution i like thinking about things uh, more pictorially ideally what we want is perfect caches so that you never stall right but a small window buys you kind of exactly the opposite when you get a long latency miss you execute for a while and then your window becomes blocked and you stall for a long time and then after that you continue computing and you get another long latency cache miss after some uh, quick your window gets blocked and you stall for a longer long time again So what run ahead does is when it gets to the first stall when the oldest instruction becomes the uh, when the oldest instruction is a long latency cache miss you enter the speculative processing mode and instead of stalling you keep processing instructions and you hopefully you get to this independent long latency cache miss which you can service in parallel with the original cache miss when the original cache miss returns you flush the pipeline and you re execute but when you get to the second load you don't miss anymore because you already serviced the cache miss cache misses in parallel so you save cycles uh basically this leads to a lot of benefits clearly very accurate data prefetches for both irregular and irregular access patterns instructions are also prefetched uh, and hardware prefetch and branch predictor tables are trained clearly with any idea there are advantages and disadvantages uh i already said this you follow the program path it's simple to implement most of the hardware is already built in Uh, and compared to other pre-execution based uh, prefetching techniques there is no waste of context because you use the main thread context for prefetching and no need to construct a pre-execution thread as well but there are disadvantages also extra executed instructions limited by branch prediction accuracy and you cannot prefetch depend cache misses just like a in large instruction window and the effectiveness is limited by available memory level parallelism and your prefetch distance is limited by the memory latency so we later try to solve these 
issues and further work. But let me give you quickly results. Uh, basically, we found good results, as you can see, on an aggressive baseline with an aggressive prefetcher. Uh, and we showed that you can achieve the benefit of uh, almost the three times the size of an extraction window. And we showed that this idea works with aggressive in order processors as well, as you can see in this, and you get even more benefits. Uh, and uh, I will mention briefly other works that have validated our results, let's say. This is uh, uh, also published in a paper, but a uh, uh, Challenger Childry's talk from 2008, which evaluates what they uh, run ahead, which uh, they, they called hardware scouting on their processors. And it's interesting that in their in-order processor that's very similarly configured to ours, they showed very similar results. They basically got about 40% better performance. And they basically showed that instead of putting more cash, uh, you can do run ahead. And you can read these beautiful papers that are written by Sunrock folks. And of course, they did more than uh, run ahead. They, uh, they developed this simultaneous speculative trading work. Uh, IBM Power 6 also had this load look ahead, uh, which is similar. And this paper evaluates run ahead uh, plus uh, other prefetching mechanisms that they employed and finds positive results as well. And NVIDIA more recently also implemented run ahead in their first uh, CPU, let's say. And they have a lot of interesting results that are very similar to actually what we have found uh, in our results. Uh, they, they report some numbers uh, in the IEEE micro paper. Uh, so we did more enhancements. I'm not going to talk about that, but clearly this idea has uh, 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 downsides. And we try to eliminate the downsides as much as possible. In fact, NVIDIA in their paper, they cite the second paper that we have uh, where we uh, try to eliminate the in energy inefficiency issues. And we try to eliminate the dependent L2 cache miss issues and irresolvable branch miss predictions. I'm not gonna go through that in detail, but let me look to the past a little bit. At the time we were working on this, there was a huge focus on increasing the size of the instruction window and designing bigger, more complicated machines. And I think Red Hat was a different way of thinking. Uh, the idea was to keep the out of order core simple and small at the expense of some benefits, of course, and to use aggressive automatic speculative execution for, solely for prefetching. And it turned out this was very synergistic with other techniques that are employed in the out of order core, like prefetching and branch prediction. And uh, I believe a lot of interesting and innovative academic ideas also ensued. I'm not, I don't have time to cover them. But I will mention one precedent uh, that actually uh, was an interesting work. While we were working on this, uh, I think my co-authors would remember it. Uh, we did not know about this work while we were uh, late into it, actually. And we, we used to call run ahead execution scratch mode execution because you were actually executing the instructions, pre-executing them, and you were scratching everything after that and going back. But we, we later found out about this work that was published by Jim Dundas and Trevor Mudge, and it was Jim Dundas's thesis. And we, had, we renamed everything so that we were consistent with the terminology that was developed in this work over here. And I will also uh, credit Andy Glue's uh, Asplos Wild and Crazy Ideas paper. It's a one pager that essentially uh, talks about uh, the mindset of run ahead, MLP yes, ILP no. Of course, we don't go as far as what he says over here, but it's a beautiful one pager that I would recommend to everyone. Okay, looking to the future, uh, I believe uh, even though today it may not uh, look like it, I think microarchitecture is still extremely important and fundamental and fun, the mental uh, and impactful as well. Uh, Reddit is a great example also of harmonious industry academia collaboration. We, uh, we had a lot of fun working together with Intel, Jared, and Chris uh, at the time. And I think fundamental problems will remain fundamental and will require fundamental solutions. So I really like that. So one final note, I think uh, I had to end this uh, with, a, with a note uh, because I worry about our community sometimes. Uh, our purpose was and is to advance the state of the art. And I believe that should be the sole purpose of any scientific effort. Maybe I'm too naive in this. Uh, I, I feel there's a dangerous tendency, especially today, uh, that increasingly goes against the scientific purpose. And I see this more and more in how reviewing is done, how paper acceptance decisions is done, uh, paper formatting rules, publication processes, and the bureaucracy we create all around this. Whereas I think if you think about conferences as just a way of advancing science, there's only one metric, right? It, does this paper advance the state of the art? That's it. <laughs> I think that com uh, conferences are not a comp competition. So I would, uh, we should really go back and start respecting science much more. And I use these slides in the past also, but very quickly, I think we need to somehow uh, ensure that reviewing practices basically go along with what we do. I think Redhead paper was accepted at the time in the first shot, but I don't know really if it would, be, it would have been accepted today. Uh, I thought the, uh, the, the paper was uh, good enough, uh, but, uh, Today, people may want comparisons to X, Y, and Z, and T, and L, but I think we should really 
uh, have a bar saying, does this really advance the state of the art? Do I really? And I, th I think we should also be heterogeneous. Not all ideas are equal. Uh, some ideas require 20 pages. Some ideas require two pages, perhaps, right? I think uh, having uh, very strict rules is not uh, good in general. I'm not going to cover all of these. So I believe we need to fix the your accountability problem. We have a big problem affecting uh, the impact of our community going into the future. But I will end with a positive note because I think uh, all of the researchers uh, that are young and also old should follow their passion. Don't get derailed by naysayers, even though there's a lot of uh, that happening, I think. We should be resilient. Uh, and I think as long as we focus on learning and scholarship and quality, hopefully our work will have impact in the field. Thank you. Uh, my co-authors may want to chime in. I see Yale here. Uh, Yale, would you like to say a few words? You're muted. Okay. So I see I'm muted. Now, so now I'm not muted. Uh, so I'm amazed that you were able to squeeze this into such a short period of time. Your initial uh, set of slides, I thought you needed 45 minutes. There are a couple of things I want to comment on. One is, if you look at the, the uh, collection of co-authors, you see uh, Owner and me from Texas and Jared and Chris uh, from uh, uh, Intel at that time. Uh, and that, the, the point is that uh, we're in a world where collaboration between industry and the university uh, is incredibly important. And when you do what our owner says and look to the science instead of the personal things, uh, you have a better shot of advancing science. There's no question that, you know, uh, so owner and I have enormous respect for Jared and Chris. They're incredibly outstanding. And um, uh, we benefited a lot from that industry uh, university collaboration. Uh, the other point that uh, is important is that uh, even though everybody is uh, sort of wrapped around this uh, uh, multi-core, many-core, infinity, infinite number of cores, which it gets to be silly uh, pretty quickly that we're talking now about a thousand cores on a chip. Uh, thank you, software people, if you can write your algorithms to take advantage of a thousand cores. Uh, IOP is still important. And if we devote the microarchitecture resources to improving the microarchitecture, we will get better ILP, and that can uh, help the uh, performance of, it doesn't matter how many cores you have in there. So we were delighted to uh, be part of this group that considers microarchitecture uh, still important. Uh, owner rep uh, 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 referenced the work of Dundas. It's important always to recognize, as owner has said, you're not the only smart guy in the room. And uh, Dundas uh, was the, uh, you know, the first person to uh, look at this problem. He did it for in-order execution, uh, but he, he looked at this problem and uh, he deserves credit. And it's always important to give credit uh, to people that come uh, uh, before us. Um, I think the last thing I want to say is that I think, so owner decreased the amount of effort he put into his advice to the future uh, I'd like us all to take that seriously. Uh, it is all about advancing the state of the art. And uh, the more we get into that and leave this other crap that we've been seeing for the, uh, lately behind, uh, the more likely we will uh, advance the, uh, the state of the art. So, oh, one more thing. Um, this was the first, as Ona pointed out, this was the first paper on run ahead. And there are lots of great advantages and there are some disadvantages. And the purpose of owner's later uh, first author papers in Run Ahead was correcting and uh, seeing what do we do about the disadvantages? Because it can be the case that doing Run Ahead is a bad idea. And I invite you to look at the follow on papers that show what do we do and how do we determine if Run Ahead is really going to work for this particular application. And with that, I will shut up. Thank you very much. <laughs>